emodels.co.uk. Make something awesome. Hi everyone, welcome. Ted here, Skipper Ted from Skipper Scale Models, building for eModels. eModels.co.uk. That's them. This is the epic build you've all been waiting for the Trumpeter 200 scale Titanic. It's huge. It's so big I can't get it on the bench, and you have to excuse the handheld camera because it's on the workshop floor. Um, last time i had a box this big in the workshop it was for the uh, u552 the german u-boat and i think this is going to be another epic build and as fantastic a build as the u-boat was um right i'm going to set the camera up because we need to have a look in this box i know you've seen in the box before and you've probably seen it around everywhere else on the web uh but we'll have a quick look just to see what we've got and then we'll get on with the build all right here we are, the box is open. Um, we can immediately see uh, recognizable to uh, anybody that's brought a trumpeter kit before. Boxes within boxes. There's one, uh, two, three, one underneath. Uh, that box there has got the LED lighting kit in it. And this big box here has got the hull. We'll have a look at that in a moment, obviously. Um, there's the, uh, this, instructions and everything in here uh, the uh, instructions for putting it all together they're, they're good uh, there's a bit of advertising literature for our uh, trumpeter and some of the other kits that's in here as well um, there's um, I, I was mistaken I thought this was going to be uh, available from all the uh, trumpeter stockists but it seems that according to this this is an add-on set uh, which is available just for Trump from Trumpeter from March 2000 uh, 20, uh, sorry March 2020 whether it's going to be available from eModels in due course that's yet to be found out but we'll, we'll see as it goes on but it's a, a detail upset that uh, Trumpeter bought out already for this kit uh, there's the LED assembling guide um, I'm going to make a couple of changes to this I also plan to um, illuminate uh, some of the uh, the hull um, so that the lights will shine out of the portals but we'll discuss that when we get to the hull and finally we have uh, a very nice uh, set of uh, colour call outs a simple colour uh, scheme for uh, any, any liner uh, just a simple colour scheme uh, just a few colours but they're all, all listed up there everything that you need all well, listed up there and it's very, a very nice colour colour chart anyway I'll go and get this camera mounted while I open some of these boxes uh, because it's a two-handed effort to open the boxes they are quite tight so we'll be back in just a second here we are then back with the boxes open well at least some of them we've left uh, the big one in the in the box there uh, that contains the deck uh, sections uh, that uh, we'll, we'll leave them in there I'm not going to examine each and every bag uh, scientifically or or in great detail it's just enough to say that it's a nicely packed box there's lots of plastic uh, carefully wrapped and packed in plastic bags and for the moment I would say until you come to um, need a particular sprue I'd leave it in the bag that way you're not going to lose any of the parts there's really a lot of parts in here uh, it does say that there's 1280 plus pieces that's quite a lot of parts um, some of the more noticeable parts the first thing of opening a box is I do find that there's the um, uh, a stand uh, this would be the finished display stand um, I'm not going to use it just yet um, what I am going to do is going back to the days of when I built uh, radio control boats and things like that I used to build a building slip just for building the, the, uh, the ships on a building slip where it's just a, it's just really a stand to keep the hull of the boat off the work surface um, that way when you painted the hull 
it's not going to be dragged around um, the, your workbench and all the paint and everything gets scratched or the bottom and things like that it's just to protect it and sometimes if you build them with a little tray underneath you can keep one or two bits and pieces in there as well so that's the this display stand we'll leave that right till the end and we'll we'll, we'll use that then uh, also um, for those of you who are uh, either like or loathe your uh, photo etch there's plenty of photo etch in this kit to keep you occupied there's two three five seven seven pieces of photo etch um, all the little windows all the the cranes and companion ways the ladders and things like that uh, rails uh, one or two things that you can spot from in here uh looks like either more grating or uh, uh vents or something like that uh this looks like uh that could be the compass platform but uh yeah there's lots and lots there's certainly enough in here to keep you occupied uh by the end of this kit you should be a master of photo etch um talking about that talk about the detail of the kit um, I don't know if you caught in the first video when I was at work uh, at uh, eModels what I'm going to do is build this kit out of the box uh, I believe that as it is Trumpeter have done a great job on it and it will make a wonderful sort of display model uh, for your office your home for your workshop wherever you want it to be it's going to be a good enough as it is straight out of the box now I know a lot of you out there a lot might be watching this thinking this is wrong that's wrong I'll do this better yeah great that's what modeling is all about if you want to make improvements to it fantastic go ahead and do that and enjoy doing that that's what it's all about if you want to put lots of detail into it brilliant and, and a more power to your elbow for doing that but I'm just going to show people how it comes out of the box and how they can make an outstanding model from it uh, the next thing we're going to look at is um, the the lighting set if we could just reach over and get this one out this is a titanic lighting set uh, I'm not too sure about this um, it's had a lot of mixed reviews um, throughout the uh, internet and various forums and things like that um, whether I use it all whether I use some of it I certainly won't one thing I won't be doing I won't be using the lights on the um, on the funnels I can't quite get it open uh, because I think they do really detract from the model itself uh, big LEDs and things like that but all the instructions are all there uh, there's a quite a bit of soldering to do now I am thinking of looking at other ways and uh, maybe alternative sort of lighting setups for this um, and if we get to that stage and we're able to do something with the lighting uh, I'll certainly be showing different ways to do it but uh, yeah there's lots of uh, wires and resistors and LEDs and things all in this bag enough uh, to keep to, to get on with I am thinking of lighting the hull and on that note we'll get the hull out <clears throat> she's a big one uh, maybe not quite a hull more of a more of a canoe but uh, a nicely molded uh, one-piece hull unlike the u-boat unlike the German u-boat it doesn't come in two parts uh, it, this is the hull to work on and once you get it out of the box once you start work on the hull that's it you need the bench to put it on so that's another consideration if you are thinking of getting this you certainly need uh, the space to build it uh, nicely plated nicely molded nice plating on it um, the portholes I'll be drilling some of them out I'm not going to sit forever and drill every one out one because I get a little bit bored with it and two I don't think it needs them all drilled out I think it just needs a couple well not a couple but a few very similar to what there is on the box art 
um, just to give an impression of people moving about the ship and the lights shining through the hull. Uh, same on the other side but nicely moulded. A nice strong hull as well. Um, doesn't really flex or anything like that. I have seen worse. Uh, certainly uh, a lot lighter hulls, a lot flexible, needing a lot of bracing inside but I don't think this is going to need it. Um, but that's about it. Yeah, she's big, she's huge and she will make an imposing feature uh, in any any way she sits, whether uh, you want to display it at home or in a museum or anything like that, uh, she's going to make an impressive model. Right, the first thing to do first is go and make a building slip for it and then we can have a, a deeper look, look in the boxes, get some bits and pieces out and start gluing things together. Uh, before you go, all these boxes here, certainly the big one there uh, that the hull came out of, keep them don't throw them away because that's got some nice shaped form in it for the bow and the stern of this hull and I think when you've come to finish it if you're going to move it around anywhere it's going to need to be nicely packed so just hang on to the boxes don't throw them away yet anyway I'll go and get some things done and we'll make a start on this okay here we are back at the bench oh that yep yeah that's the hull uh, on the bench now and uh, this is what I was talking about before this is the uh, model slipway I suppose you could call it the the building stand that I'll be using to to build the uh, the boat on um, just a simple I built this one out of uh, some uh, scrap foam board uh, quite substantial foam board I think it's actually been used as a, an advertising hoarding so it's really really quite thick dense but you could build one I built them before out of uh, plywood MDF or anything like that that's if you want to build one but I find them useful for hauling the boat uh, and as a little tray maybe keeping things in as well um, you can take the profiles uh, on the end here take the profiles from the stand itself uh, just draw around the curves and it gives you the profile of the whole all you've got to do is just to make sure that these two, this end and this end are, um, are the right distance apart so that you don't foul what will have, will be fitting shortly uh, in here will be fitting the bilge keels and there we are the hole sort of sits on that so I'm sorry you can't get a, a wider shot than this otherwise we'll have to go back to handheld camera again um, right that that's the building slip that's the box that I'll be building on as I say it keeps the hull off the ground off the workbench so that you're not scraping or scratching all your paintwork off and uh, yeah, at times when you really want to adjust the boat so it's nice and level you can get it as such anyway what we're going to do now I'll move this reset the camera up and we'll uh, do the traditional cutting off of the first bit and gluing uh, on the kit yeah we'll go and do that here we are right I, I've jumped ahead a few stages and we're going straight in at page uh, number four or step number four and uh, we're going to look at putting these two uh, bilge keels in um, A1 and A21 what you've got to do remember the, the hull itself is upside down at this stage um, so make sure you get them glued on at the right part so A1 and A21 they come on the A sprue over here we'll do uh, A21 first uh, so in the great uh, uh, new tradition of e-models I declare this uh, model open so there we go Once again, nice uh, sharp plastic from Trumpeter. Uh, nice and firm. No squidginess underneath the uh, sprue cutters. Oops, dropped it. 
Look at the length of that for a bilge keel. Oh, yeah. Time to go on. I'll just go clean this up and we'll get it glued on. Uh, that's it. Yep. The um, first thing we do after building the uh, building uh, uh, slip, um, the, the box to build it on, is to take it out again and turn the hole upside down to glue on the, um, the, the bilge keel. So this is the first bit of glue going on the first bit of plastic attached to the first bit of the hole uh, so here we go what I've done uh, it's quite long and wobbly uh, as you saw when we took it off uh, so I've, I've actually attached the, um, the the bilge keel to the hole with some tape as you can see this is just as so you don't need three or four hands while you try and uh, get the glue on and hold it in position so just a uh, we can just begin by a touch and then let that glue go off and then apply more and get it all sealed in. You could uh, tack it on with um, some uh, super glue I suppose but I don't really like using that it doesn't give you enough time to work and position everything. Uh, there are a couple of indentations on the hull uh, just to show you the proper location of the, of the bilge keels. Uh, the idea of a bilge keel is to uh, give the boat a little bit more uh, left to right stability, stop it rocking. Oops, as, as I've dropped the instructions on the floor. Uh, but th that's the idea of them, uh, to certainly slow it down uh, or to give it some, as I say, some stability. As you see, it's quite a, a narrow hull for the, the length and height of the ship. Uh, I st as you can see, I've still some scene lines to clean up here, but we can do all them in due course. Uh, right, the next thing I'm going to get on with, after that momentous uh, opening of uh, gluing, uh, looking at the, the plan, uh, I'm going to get uh, these cut out and get these stuck on. Uh, look at the rudder as well. Uh, I know that you purists and things will say that this isn't the right uh, type and size of rudder but uh, I'm using what's in the box. So right uh, another scene cut I know this is uh, cutting and chopping and changing in different scenes and things but it's just the size of the model that uh, we need to get it in in shot so you can see the best. Right we'll do go do that go do the other one of these on the other side uh, get a bit few few more bits cut out and we'll get them glued on. And as you come back, um, I'm working on uh, some of the uh, mini photo etch parts that are going to go on this kit. These are some of the first parts that we apply. Uh, are these, there's two little ones, there's one that's already gone on here, one here and one here. Um, they uh, look like they're uh, grill fronts. Um, I would perhaps think they're uh, intakes, uh, sea intakes for the hull. Uh, for the ship itself, cooling water or anything like that. Um, uh, and what we've got to do, we've just got to super glue these on. I've got a snazzy little tool here that a friend Kenneth sent me. Uh, don't ask me where he got it from, I don't know, but it's really pretty good. Um, you can also use uh, a simple uh, wax pencil available from e models. And the way to do this is to use some super glue. This is uh, Zap. Uh, zap a gap, uh, yeah, just simple super glue. Um, the way to apply these is just a tiniest of drops just on uh, a carrier. Try not to apply it straight for the bottle because it go everywhere. Um, and then the, the wax tip of this picks up the, the photo etch, but it has a useful um, uh, super glue applicator on the other end. I hope. This is how uh, I think it works anyway, but it works for me. I then pick up the part with the waxed end and just drop it. There we go. Now I'm hoping that that will glue. What it takes, just hold it 
it, it does say that you super glue's instant but it's not just give it a couple of seconds and when I take this off it's bound to fall off no it hasn't then what we do we just leave them till the super glue goes hard and then because it's just on the edge if we could uh, zoom in a little bit see how it's just on the edge of the plating oh, open the camera try and adjust it round because it's just on the edge of the plating these pieces of photo etch just want forming you just use your finger just push them in uh, let's see if we could do it with this one are they falling off doesn't need much just to put it in position right while they're going off we can move further back along the ship and have a look at applying the uh, propeller wings so let's get it in position I'll tell you what I'll turn the camera off reset everything up and then we'll we'll look at the propeller wings yeah there we are we've moved aft along the boat a little bit towards the um, to, towards the blunt end and this is where we're going to apply the uh, propeller shaft support wings call the wings because they look a little bit like a wing I suppose um, these are just simply glued along the side here do remember that when you build them remember there is a left and a right or a port and a starboard don't get them mixed up otherwise you'll uh, have a lot of filling to do because they won't fit properly they do fit fairly well in there uh, they just follow that indentation that's marked on the hull um, and what we're going to do with this is fairly similar to what we did with the um, uh, br uh, bilge keels but what we're going to do this time I've got this out of my uh, armory it's a uh, Tamiya extra thin extra thin quick sitting uh, it's the light green cap uh, I found this is quite good for um, fast fixing uh, just put a drop on just hold it just hold it in position and it does away with the um, sort of holding on with tape and things like that but you've got to make sure that everything fits first because uh, once it's glued it's glued gives you a little bit more flexibility than I think super glue does uh, as you saw before I'm never quite <laughs> uh, never quite uh, the best when it comes to super gluing uh, because immediately after I turned the camera off and moved the whole of them photo which bits fell off so I put them back on anyway I'm ready to go again so that's that one done uh, then we bit of glue down the aft end and just get that tacked in and held just hold it for a little bit you really want to hold these in tight just to make sure there's no gaps because um, it'd be a real pain to try and get in there with uh, any filler then fill it up uh, then file it off things like that so hold again we'll turn it over and we can see there's just a little bit of a gap developing but when we close that down and we squeeze it down and hold it Just let the action, the capillary reaction, take the glue in and then hold it tight. Once it's glued in, once it's gone off a little bit, I'll go around it with some general purpose uh, Tamir Ultra Thin and get the plastic really bonded. Yeah. While we're at the back end, we might as well do the rudder as well. Here's the, oops, here's the rudder already cut off. Uh, that's just going to simply in there and clip on. And then once again, 
we don't need the extra thing just the ordinary glue will do with this just put it on some of the pintles holds it in position just a couple now this is where you've got to eye the ship uh, eye along the ship and make sure that this rudder is going to go in straight it's going to be straight because if it's not straight it will stand out like a sore thumb and it'll be forever you'll be forever wishing it was straight and people will point and comment and that's it just take your time make sure it's in straight a little bit a splash of it will glue around let the glue do the work and there we go that is about all the work that we're going to need to do on this hull now what I'll do I'll just let everything set up um, and let the glues go off and then we'll turn it back look uh, put it back on its stand and have a look and see if we could do anything else before we run out of before we run out of time for this video all right let it glue up let the glue dry and we'll see you in a minute now I've decided that the next job I do on the hull um, before we went for paint would be to drill some of the portholes out um, there's quite a lot of portholes on this boat and uh, to drill them all out I think I'd get fed up and lose patience and yeah you can drill them all out there's no problem with that it's just I decided not to I decided to do it more of a representation of the box art if you have a look at the box art you'll see that there's just one or two uh, well there's quite a few portholes that are lit up but some are in darkness as well so I try and represent it to be something like that now then you're going to need some drills from a range of about three mil which is the largest down to about 1.1 millimeter uh, which is some of the smallest uh, because if you have a look I don't know if it, if it comes through on the video you can see that uh, some of these portholes are different sizes uh, the the larger ones are up here on the top and uh, they go down and the smaller ones too now these these on the water line are not portholes so don't drill them out they are, are overboard discharges uh, waste pipes things like that that will uh, empty sort of water and things uh, from inside the ship back out into the ocean so don't drill them out the the portholes are above the water line and need drilling out now then a way to drill them out you can do it the hard way well not the hard way but the slow and tedious way of just using a pin vise and drilling some out one at a time just make sure they are nice and nice and uh, open uh, another way I've found of doing them is that you can use an electric drill uh, a bit like a Dremel I've got a similar type thing here now then using this do not use it on a great on a great speed like that what you're going to do is turn it down until it's just in so turning and then when you press when the, when the pressures get applied on it it actually slows it right down because if you drill too fast you will melt the plastic and you will distort the shape of the porthole uh, so don't try and rush this a nice simple uh, and I make a nice simple job to do put some radio, put the radio on sit back a few at a time go to have some to eat, drink come back do a few more take your time nice and relaxing way to spend the time so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to continue with this uh, and then we'll call it an end to the video as I have I've got quite a bit to do on this 
Uh, the next time we come along we'll have a look at um, applying some paint to it. I'm going to apply a white uh, coat of paint on the inside of the hull. That's for the lighting. Uh, I'm going to do a grey primer on the outside and then we'll look at putting putting the the uh, the black and the brown on or, or the anti-fouling. We'll look at putting that. I'll show you how to strike a line between uh, the two colours and how they go on. Uh, then as it progresses I'll show you We'll, we'll look at the uh, the very thin yellow line that goes right around the boat and also the, the painting of the superstructure. So that's what I'm going to get on with. Um, uh, just before you go, I forgot to show you when we opened the box before, I came across the uh, decals later on. I forgot to show you them. Um, so here they are. These are the decals that go with the boat. Options of a number of flags. Uh, the Royal Mail flag, obviously RMS, Royal Mail Ship Titanic, uh, French flags and lots of little tiny things all in here. I think these are for the lifeboats and things like that and some uh, beware of propellers and obviously the Titanic names that uh, are there as well. So the, the, they, look, they look a very nice set of decals, not too much carrier film, hopefully they'll go on okay. And just you can't really see it, but down here is the um, depth kit, depth marks for the for the bow. Uh, but yeah, that's it. So that's what I forgot to show you before. So in the meantime, I will say goodbye for now, for the end of part one, and we'll get uh, some paint on in part two and look at putting some of the decks on and putting things together. Uh, but in the meantime, thanks for watching. Do like and subscribe to this so you can see uh, the updates when they come live on YouTube. Uh, don't forget to tick the little bell down in the bottom here somewhere uh, and you'll get notifications of when it all comes uh, live again. But in the meantime, thanks for me, uh, Ted, Ted at eModels, eModels.co.uk. I will see you all next time. Bye. Right, but get on with some of these portals now another one to do uh, where are we at there we go <laughs>